It's easy to disprove it unless you stay in your bubble, unless you stay in your echo chamber. So what we need to do, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, in which I'm reserving the right to be proven wrong with new information that I don't have access to, how I feel right now is that we need to synthesize a curriculum, an ideology that brings together our theological histories, the atomic theory, what science has shown us to be true, and to recognize that they are both integral in understanding the human mind, creativity, language, storytelling, and the physiological heroism that comes with creation, comes with the investment of time in contemplation, in mimicking these positions that do what? They align us. What does alignment do? It perfects our relationship with gravity. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. See, for me, this is what I need to expand. It might be something down here for you. It might be up here. You might have some natural physiological asymmetry that, hey, whatever happened had to happen for you to discover this. I need investors. I need salespeople. I need people to build these. This is, I'm serious about this. This idea and these principles can change the world by changing us, our physiological, neurological, emotional selves. But you have to want to change. You have to not like who you are, to have reflected and been embarrassed and been, felt shame and felt regret and felt anger towards the individuals who were perhaps justly or unjustly given blame. You know, giving that up, letting that go. Everything in our world is, we're holding pens, we're holding phones, we're holding bags, we're holding books, we're holding steering wheels. We're holding things all the time. Take the past, take every embarrassment, every shameful experience you've had. Let it go and activate the muscles of expansion. Expansion and elevation. It's still forearm muscles. <laughs> What's going on, brother? You, you, you need to go down? All right. You, you free up everything here to grow, to flow as much as possible. See, I don't, I'm not even using a youth throw right now. It's almost like those are for rests in which something is stabilized. I have, I have no stability now. It's only my musculature. Mm. Mm. See, whenever I do that, I'm altering the source of pressure that is activating certain muscles. If it's activating them more, then there must be something else that's relaxing down here. It's relaxing into alignment as a result of the suspension of my skull. Mm. I can feel whenever I do the, the, the Darth Vader breath. Small movements, small movements in your knees small movements in your hips, at your femurs, ball and socket joints, everything just a little bit. And then make it so small that it looks as if you are sitting still. But you can feel yourself shifting the weight on your feet from the
every joint, every sector of your body is being harmonized in these slow, respiratorily generated. The genesis of these movements. I was going to say it, it's always inside out, but that's not true. Because you can, you can initiate that inertia from out here. You can change the finger patterns that you use because that's changing the activation of the expansive elevatory muscles. Does that make sense? So it's a new signal. It's a new way of commanding your body. That's a new combination of muscles that's being awakened and that's a new electrical storm. That's a new neural network. Period. That's a new experience for your central nervous system. And it's when we do it slowly that that becomes most apparent. Mm. That's doing two things for me. One, it's bringing uh, my upper arm in an elevated position in which there's slight contact, which reduces the stress and thus the different muscle groups that need to be activated to resist that consequence of gravity. But it's also opening up orbicularis oris, uh, the bucinator right here, which is connected to the aperture of the nose. Look where your, your index finger knuckle ends up, right there on your temple. Sinus, you're facilitating a more enhanced, a more efficient distribution of what the constant, ever present force of gravity. And it starts with meditation, it starts with just stopping whatever is going on in your life, just stop it and chill for a second. And then figure out how you can help your body become stronger by making it centrally. We talk about core strength, absolutely. Your core goes from up here, down to your toes, down to the soles of your feet. And it can be unified with slow motion flexions, slow motion elevations, slow motion expansions. Mm. And slow motion relaxations. Mm. Something ever happens to me share this video because this is foundational knowledge. If you put this with permaculture, which is suburban farming, like multi-species, only synergistic species are planted, but do it for the entire school grounds, but except for like the portions that need to be reserved for running an activity. This, the, the, the playgrounds are too big. There's no way that two or three teachers can monitor them. So what do you do? You eliminate the fuel that you need to mow them. You enable the students to take action, to become activists, to do more than their part. I think government should do this as well. Pay people to garden. 
Empower them with the knowledge that they are responsible for the cultivation of the city, the land that's actually being taxed to provide these resources. It's a way of expressing their gratitude for the context in which to learn, the context in which to experience sport and all of the extracurricular activities that our culture makes possible. We fail in many regards. There wouldn't be these school shootings if we had an educational system that had a curriculum that explained this in such a way that it convinced the community to redefine the divine, redefine the sensibilities with which we approach relationship. What can unify that? The youth throne system has got to be a part of whatever plan. Urban farming, that connects with rural farming. That's now common experience. That's now common knowledge, or at least there's some Venn diagram. We're all Venn diagram. We're all trillions and trillions of Venn diagrams. on this. Of course, it's noon Pacific Standard Time. I guess it'll be two in, in, in Norman. It'll be three in New York and D.C. That's which is where I'm headed next. I'm going to the United Nations with this idea. I'm going to take an American flag, a U.N. flag, and a Chinese flag. Mm. 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 I think somebody needs to create a flag that's just like human brains and then human bodies somehow coming together. <laughs> you know, like, uh, maybe like biblical quotes, Quranic quotes, and then uh, equations somehow merging into the rhetorical ideological world into which we've been born. Other generations didn't have this uh, canon to acquire or to learn. Other generations didn't have these electronic temptations for distraction. All of the clickbait, all of the research that's been done on the human mind, that needs to be democratized. And it is slowly but surely, but that's something that ought to be happening at the, the highest levels of government. That ought to be in their sensibility. They ought to understand that this is something that we need to collaborate on at the, uh, at the educational, scholastic, academic level and continue that in popular culture, in the decisions that we make in understanding and hearing people out and authentically forming relationships or recognizing that there's a significant challenge in us forming relationship. That's the power of uh, government to incentivize urban permaculture, to incentivize rural permaculture. I don't even think they're aware that there's a, not just an organic alternative, this is an organic, fuel-efficient alternative. Everyone wants that. If it's cheaper, then I can do more with less. <laughs> hey. I'm going to go down. Again. It's so important to be polite. I tried to speak in Spanish earlier, and I should have asked her the question. Can I practice my Spanish? Can I please practice it? But I, I neglected to. And I, that, that's, that's not the first time that I've, I've neglected other people's opinions. I know, I hate when I do it because I always regret it and I think about it I'm like, ah, 
I'm trying to get better at that because everyone has something to say. Everyone has something to contribute. Everyone has some experience that is representative of their genes and geography and how 